In this video, I'm gonna give you the top 10 differences between hobby beekeeping and commercial beekeeping. It's amazing the amount of times this video has been requested. So I'm gonna break it down. Top 10 differences between hobby beekeeping and commercial beekeeping. Hopefully there's some good tips in there for you if you're an aspiring hobby beekeeper looking to break into the commercial world. Number one, time. Beekeeping takes an inordinate amount of time. It really does consume your entire life. So don't go into it thinking, oh, I'll do 20 hours a week and then I can spend the rest of the week down at Starbucks having a nice coffee. I do like Starbucks and I do go there quite a lot, but beekeeping takes so much of your time. Comparing that back into the hobby world, one of the comments that I get all the time is, how do you do your inspection so quickly? What do you look out for? If you're interested in finding out the answer to that one, I'm gonna do a video on it this year showing you how I do my five minute inspection. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that one. But I speak to a lot of hobby beekeepers and they say it takes me maybe 25, 30 minutes to do an inspection and they write the most detailed, incredible hive notes you've ever seen. And they've got a beautiful procedure for lifting the supers up and putting it down in the correct place. And you have to put the frames back the right way round and they can't cross over each other. And this is the hive that you do first. This is the hive that you do last. You kind of get where I'm coming from. Beekeeping as a hobby is so, so different to beekeeping as a commercial enterprise. And the biggest driver on all of that is time. So it depends where you are around the world, but generally you're looking at around between say three and 500 hives per FTE, so per full-time equivalent beekeeper within that business. I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here because it does depend on your strategy for your business. So before you jump into the commercial world and say, right, I'm gonna be a commercial beekeeper, beekeeping is gonna be my job. I'd ask you the question, well, are you going down the bulk honey route? Are you going down the nuke route? Are you gonna go down the queen's route? Are you gonna combine all three of those in some way? Are you gonna specialize in hive products like pollen, propolis, royal jelly? What's your strategy? And you need to understand what your strategy is on day one, preferably, before you go and buy all of your equipment. Don't do what a lot of beekeepers do. Say, right, I'm gonna be a commercial beekeeper. I'm gonna buy 500 hives off Dave down the road because he's retiring, and then get into it after you've kept bees for a couple of years and you're only really used to managing two or three colonies, and then realize just how much work managing that many colonies is. Do some research, speak to some people first, but jumping back to number one on this list, the time taken to do everything is like chalk and cheese. When you're a hobby beekeeper, you're doing it for fun. You're doing it as a leisurely activity. Everything's nice and slow. When you're a commercial beekeeper, you're flipping that round and you're trying to be as efficient as you possibly can, getting everything done in the limited amount of time that you've got. Number two, it wouldn't be a beekeeping business without talking about money. Now, I often hear this one thrown around saying, if you wanna make a million pounds in beekeeping, you better start off with two million. And personally, my opinion on that is that is a load of rubbish. There is a good, good amount of money to be made in beekeeping if you're good at business. Look at people in the US. I know there's a little bit of reduction in prices on the pollination fees at the moment, but they get good money going and getting pollination contracts. Look at New Zealand. They sell Manuka honey for a hundred times what we sell our blossom honey for over here. I know they're the kings of marketing, but there's good, good money to be made in Manuka honey. And then look at the UK, the queen market, the nuke market, the honey market, the hive product market, beekeeping equipment market. That seems to be where they make a decent amount of money as well. So although it's not a cheap hobby to get into, and it's certainly not a cheap business to get into, and the capital expenditure is quite high, there's good, good money to be made in beekeeping. I'm gonna follow this point up in point number 10 on this video give you a really good tip as to what not to do with money. Number three on the list, and this is a really key difference between the two, is compliance. And that word kind of sends shivers down my spine because when you move from a hobby beekeeper into the commercial world, you need to comply with numerous legislation. So we're talking about health and safety at work. We're talking about food, hygiene, and labeling. We're talking about this anti-slavery act all of the stuff that comes with a business that you just don't really think about when you make that jump up from a hobby beekeeper to a commercial beekeeper. You're thinking about what size extractor am I gonna buy and what social media channels am I gonna have? But you get all of the compliance elements thrown in and you just don't see them coming and it's one after the other. So what I would recommend if you're looking at making that step up, go and have a look at some general YouTube videos on how to remain compliant in any business form for your specific location, because that will really help you out. And it means that you're just prepared as you move into it. Number four on the list is insurance. 
Now, if you're a member of the British Beekeepers Association and you pay them the extra two pounds or whatever it is, you get your bee diseases insurance and you get a little bit of product and public liability insurance as well. When you make that next step up, that insurance doesn't cover you as a commercial outfit. You need to go away and get separate insurance and you can get separate insurance from some of the specific organizations that offer it. Don't discount it though, don't overlook it. You need very good specific insurance for your business. Right, number five, some of the fun ones as well, marketing. As a hobby beekeeper, you might make 100, 200 jars of honey in a season, you extract it in September and then come October, it's all gone. When you jump up that next level and if you go up to, I don't know, three or 400 hives, and you work out how much honey you're actually sitting on throughout the year, you need to try and work out a marketing strategy that at least lets you compete with some of the major players in the industry. And we go back to that little bit at the beginning talking about strategy. How are you gonna sell your honey? Is it even honey that you're gonna look for? Are you gonna sell it in buckets? Are you gonna sell it in drums? Are you gonna sell it in the smallest package possible? Are you gonna package it up into little tiny jars and sell it to the hotel trade? Or are you not interested in honey and you're gonna do hive adoption, you're gonna do nucleus colonies, you're gonna do queens? Or are you gonna completely branch out and do propolis royal jelly and then make that into hand creams with beeswax? Your marketing strategy is a subset of your overall strategy and should be kind of shoehorned into place depending on what you're trying to achieve. Comparing that to a hobby beekeeper, you might just put it on Facebook Marketplace and say, I've got 100 jars of honey here, first come, first served, and then you're sold out within two weeks doesn't take much thinking about. But if you wanna be a profitable business, you need to identify which avenues you're gonna use for your marketing, and you need to identify your core customer base so that you can target them effectively. This is gonna be a really hard one for people, and it was certainly a hard one for me. You need to learn from your losses, and you need to learn not to chase your losses. If you've got one or two hives in the garden and one of them dies, you've lost 50% of your beehives. It's really difficult, it's very hard to take and it gets you down. As a commercial beekeeper, you just can't let that happen. And it's a game of numbers. So I'll use the example there. Say you've got two beehives in your garden. One of them turns into a bit of a drone laying queen. Or even a step worse than that, you found out that you've got laying workers. Now if you're a hobby beekeeper, you might say, right, I've got two hives. One of them's doing okay, the other one's not okay. So I'm gonna steal, borrow, and beg some of the good stuff from the hive that's okay to try and remedy the hive that's not okay. I always say to people in this situation, do not do that. Do not chase your losses. Do not try and take away from the good to make the bad better. Because inevitably what you end up with is two either average colonies or one average and one dead colony. So when you move into a commercial world, you're changing things around completely. So I know some bee breeders, if they see three or four cells of chalk brood, that's it, the colony gets completely eliminated. The queen goes and they'll requeen it. If they find a colony that's got laying workers in it, instead of trying to add stuff in to save that laying worker colony, they just shake it out and they let that lay colony worker boost all of the other colonies around them. It's a cutthroat approach, but it means that you limit your losses and you learn not to chase them. It's a real difference from hobby to commercial and you have to learn it pretty quick or you can get yourself in a bit of a sticky situation. Next on the list is trying to streamline your operation. And this comes down to the first two elements on this list, time and money. You don't wanna spend your money on the most expensive piece of machinery because you think it's gonna be the best. And you don't wanna go and buy 40 of the most expensive beehives because they're gonna be really fancy and look really nice. You need to get your business hat on and you need to think about adding money into your operation to make it easier for you, but most importantly, to give you a return on your investment. So whereas a hobby beekeeper, you might look at a nice long hive and think, wow, that long hive looks incredible. It's gonna look nice in my garden. Okay, it's expensive, but I'm gonna get lots of enjoyment from it. When you're thinking about things from a commercial perspective, you're looking at it and thinking, how easy is that gonna to be to inspect? Is it compatible with all of my other equipment? How's that gonna flow around my honey extraction room? Is there a cheaper material that I can use that's gonna last for an equal amount of time? Should I be buying it painted or should I be painting it myself? Should I invest in a wax dipper because the 5,000 pound cost of the wax dipper is gonna give me an extra three years working life on each of those boxes? You get fixed into this streamline operation mode and it's a very healthy place to be. What can you improve? How much is it gonna cost you to improve it? Are you gonna see the return on the investment in a reasonable amount of time? Now, the next one, we touched on it a little bit in section one, talking about having a strategy, but I'm picking it out as a very specific, have a clear business plan with targets and goals along the way. You need to measure your success 
and you need to identify the areas where you're going to grow. So as I said, you might have a strategy to say, right, I'm gonna be a 500 hive beekeeper and I'm gonna sell honey in the drum. But then you might be thinking, well, hang on, I'm gonna expand on that. And in year three, I'm gonna to look to bring in some queen sales. And in year five, I'm gonna to look to bring in some nuke sales as well. Detailing that clear business plan allows you to think ahead allows you to buy equipment in bulk and it gives flexibility in your operation and it means that you can constantly track your success but even more important than that, you can tweak things as and when they work or they don't work. I think this is the number one piece of advice for people. It doesn't matter if you've got two hives, 10 hives or 50 hives. If you're looking to make that next step up, work out what that step up is. Don't buy anything, don't talk to anyone, don't do anything until you've got a really clear business plan in place. If you're a hobby beekeeper, your business plan might be, today I'm gonna to go and do a half an hour bee inspection, have a lovely coffee and watch my bees flying in and out of the hive. That to me sounds like absolute bliss. And then the final one, number 10, and I told you I was keeping a very important one right until the end of this video. My advice to you, do not go into debt. Do not look at beekeeping and think, that's gonna make me lots of money. I'm gonna take out a loan for 100,000 pounds and I'm gonna buy X amount of beehives, this big, fancy, shiny extractor and all of the equipment. I'm gonna buy a new pickup truck and then in the first year, I'm gonna pay all of that off and I'm gonna pay myself a nice tidy wage. Beekeeping, especially in the UK, is incredibly volatile. If it rains all the way through the year and you're a honey farmer, you are going to struggle. You're not gonna be able to pay off your debts and you're probably not gonna be able to pay yourself a salary. I hate to think of anybody going into debt due to beekeeping. So have a really clear business plan and have a cash flow forecast which shows when you're gonna take money out of your business to buy certain things and when you're gonna have money coming into your business, maybe at certain times of the year when you get your honey crop in or during the summer months when you're selling your queens or early in the spring when you're selling your nukes. You can build up that revenue very, very quickly over say three to five years and you'll soon realize that the money coming in can be spent at the right time to invest and grow your business. It is so volatile. I hate to see anybody go and invest a lot of money buying into a beekeeping business and then for the weather just to be so bad and for it to completely flop. So definitely don't do that. If you wanna know more and you're interested in learning more about how you can make money in beekeeping, I've done a two part special showing how you can make that money and the link to the video is here.